Hey there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. We're here at the shop. I'm with my good buddy, Eric Peterson. You got a new toy, didn't you? Picked one up. <laughs> Ruger American in 6.5 Creedmoor. It's yep. an American Predator. Yep. Pretty good value. Absolutely. It's in the Go Wild series. Mm -hmm. uh, like we talked earlier, I have the, the low end of the spectrum, the high end of the spectrum. I have a 243 and a 7. Yep. And I was looking for that gun that was right in the middle, the all-around long-range rifle, low recoil, something mm -hmm. my kids could shoot. This basically stacked up to all my demands. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a no-brainer. So how about this? Here's a game plan. We could unbox this. I haven't seen it. You took it out of the packaging to I just did. kind of look I at it. I couldn't help myself. Right? And uh, this is actually your third Ruger American. You, this is my third. You, yep. You've got, like you mentioned, the 243 and the 7. Yep. And uh, maybe then we could compare it with some of the other rifles that we have here Absolutely. in the shop. The Thompson Center Compass. I've got an RPR Ooh. in 65 Creedmoor. We could kind of put them side by side. Let's do it. Take some laboratory measurements with the trigger scan, with a digital scale, Absolutely. and with the Lyman Bore Cam. You that know. I'm excited to see. Look at the gun from the inside and out, and mm -hmm. then take it to 100 yards and see what maybe my hunting load is going to do with it. You Absolutely. Know, that 143 ELDX, this is a good match load. It's mm -hmm. a good hunting load. I took the bear with it. Right. That kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So let's get the box open and then let's we can do talk it. some more. Sounds good. That? All right. Here we go. It's that moment. Ooh. Da 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 da. Have you been having any Christmas story moments oh, where you're in bed bad. thinking about it? Wanting it's to all I can it? think about. Every time I turn around, <laughs> look like, at that, dude. I just want to shoot it. Nice. Okay. Cool. Here we are. So the Go Wild gets you the camo. It gets you the Cerakote. It's got the brake. Comes with the brake, the Cerakoting, uh, and the camouflage Damn, stock. I'll kind of hold that up while there you get go. the accessories out. Okay. Comes with the pick rail. That's good. This in there. Yeah, that that right. Cerakote is actually really cool. It's kind of a kind of a metallic look it's to it. Kind of got that burnt look. Um, it looks good. I think it's going to blend well in the field. Yep. Um, hopefully, I don't lose it if I set it up against a tree. <laughs> um, but other than that, nice. It's a pretty sweet looking gun. Let's see what kind of gear right. it's going to come with there. Cerakoted bolt. Nice. Da -da -da -da. There it Ooh, is. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. And Oak. this is set up for AICS mags, did you say? Correct, yeah, which is a new thing for them, and I'm really happy they did it because their rotary mag setup um, was great initially until it got dirty. And once it got dirty, I had problems feeding, and then you had to take mm. it apart and clean it, so yep. it was a little frustrating. Well, this gives you more options, and then I always like something good to pull on. You know Agreed. I mean? When you're going to drop the mag. you can get larger capacity magazines as well. Cool. Which is really cool. Anything else in the box? Uh, let's see what else we got here. Just with a safety lock is the yep. other thing that it comes with. And that's that. It's pretty cool. much what you get here. Very good. So, okay. So why don't we, let's take out a couple of other rifles. Okay. And let's kind of put them side by side to see what we got here. So Sounds this is good. your seven. Yep. There we there go. There we go. This seven. And I got my compass. This is my compass in 308. And I think... You know, well, the Compass was one of the rifles that you were thinking about, right? Yeah, the Compass was one I looked at initially. I was trying to do a comparative analysis between three different rifles. Mm -hmm. The Thompson Center Compass, the Savage Axis, and the Ruger American. Mm -hmm. And after all my research, what I found was... Um, it's not bad, is it? No, not bad. Uh, what I found was that for the money the best gun that I could afford was the Ruger American. Mm -hmm. and, I all, and, and the other reason I went with it is because of its reviews. It has a lot of really good reviews. People really like this gun. It's becoming pretty popular pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, it does everything. It's accurate. It looks cool. Uh, the price point's awesome. I picked this up for uh, $500. Um, yeah. Which I thought $500 for a long range rifle. That's a allegedly well, and you're a hunter, right? Yeah. And when you're in the woods quite a bit, whether it be varmint hunting or mm -hmm. bear hunting or deer yep. hunting, this is this is a big upgrade as far as I see it, as well as the barrel. You know, it mm -hmm. looks kind of like maybe a stick or a tree branch right. or whatever. Absolutely. And uh, that's to, to get it at that price point. So a couple other things, free floated mm -hmm. uh, stock. Right. And it's got the adjustable three to five pound. Three to five trigger, pound trigger. Yep. Threaded muzzle. This, of course, yep. comes with the, yep. the, uh, the muzzle brake. Correct. And... That's where, so so this is a little bit higher in the lineup. Mm -hmm. This was kind of the base model, is that correct? This is a base model. This is just your Ruger American 7mm rem mm -hmm. mag. Uh, it has the Magnum magazine. Uh, I set it up with a Burris um, 
optic. Uh, it's been a great rifle. It shoots really good. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it. Not one. Yep. And and so this price, what would this price point be? I think this was. Uh, I think this was a little closer to six hundred dollars, if I recall. Um, How about in today's dollars? Like if you went from this ooh. go wild back down to ooh. the base model. Ooh man. If this was five hundred. So tax. yeah. <laughs> uh, man oh man. Are you going to be at like 350? Probably, Four? probably close to 350, okay. 400 dollars. Absolutely. That's where the compass comes in. So these, I've seen guys, they've commented on my video. So, so this this video here, I went, I did the unboxing to 600 yards. We, you know, took it out and mm -hmm. hit some steel with it. We screwed on a suppressor. Yeah. Uh, this guy, I've seen for as little as 175. I've seen that as all well. All rebates I and, almost and promos. Did. But you know, it uh, it doesn't quite have the same level after aftermarket support. Is one Correct. thing. Correct. And you know, if if you just want a beat it around in the woods hunting rifle that's going to be half that's MOA, it. boom. That's I mean, it. it's hard to beat that value. Can't beat. But it. with the Ruger American, you have a, what do you, you got? MDT Ooh. chassis you can pick from the, the Magpul, Magpul Hunter stock. Yep. I mean, the options are plentiful. <laughs> There's a lot of companies that are getting into making aftermarket parts because the Rugers become so popular. Mm -hmm. They have drop-in triggers, aftermarket stocks, uh, different bolt configurations. They have uh, literally everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, match grade barrels now too. I mean, they're, yep. they're just coming out of the woodworks with stuff for the Ruger American. So for me, I wanted something that potentially down the road I could modify or capitalize on and make it even a better rifle. Mm -hmm. And with as much stuff as they're making for them, I figured what a great option. Yep, and I'll point out my friend Bill Marr from rifleshooter.com. If you haven't checked out his website, you definitely should. He's done some pretty cool rifle builds mm -hmm. with, the, with the Ruger American and at that price point, and with the inherent accuracy, you know that they're capable <laughs> of. It's it's a comp pretty compelling platform with with again the aftermarket accessories and all that too. Yep. All right. So here's what I'm thinking. Let's let's uh, well first I'm gonna take out the uh, here's my Ruger Precision rifle. So these are two different Ruger options. Let me hold that up. Mm -hmm. And so the Ruger Precision rifle is you know hovering <coughs> you know around the thousand dollar price point or whatever. And it's also chambered in, you know, 6.5 Creedmoor is one of the popular options. They've got a bunch of other chambers. They just announced the Magnum 300 Win Mag Ooh. and 338 Lapua oh this boy. year. Two, two new rifles and a mm. little bit higher price point. Sure. Um, but the thing is, for what you're after, you know, for hunting rifle, mm -hmm. like, I, I personally like these stocks a lot. They're not bad. They're lightweight. Mm -hmm. They're not going to you know, get marked up. It's already got the camel on it. Yeah. You know, you're not even going to notice if you bang that around, <laughs> no. you know, and it's just, it's just a completely different price point. But I, I'm betting that, you know, based on the results I've seen, mm -hmm. we're probably going to be able to get similar accuracy out of the Ruger American compared to the Ruger Precision Rifle. Similar. Similar. You know, compared. I mean, it might be the difference between a half inch group <clears throat> and a third inch group or something like that, I agree. but, uh, I agree. but good results. Okay. So, a couple of side-by-side -side comparisons casually here. Let's get this thing in the trigger scan and see what the trigger looks like. Let's do it. Okay. All right. All right. Just like magic, we've got the trigger scan TS11 set up. Mm -hmm. Ran a couple tests. This thing is pretty picky getting it set up. It's a laboratory-grade instrument. It's incredibly responsive to how the supports are set up, making sure that there's no play in anything. And we got some fairly consistent scans here. So how about this? Why don't we test it as is, as it came out of the box, and then we'll crank it all the way down to the minim minimum. Is that what you yeah, want? Absolutely. For yeah. running the rifle? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll do that. Okay, so uh, this instrument, by the way, if you're interested in profiling triggers, I can actually get you a discount on that. So you're going to want to click on the first link in the video description. This is the world's most accurate, most comprehensive trigger profiling system. And so what we do is, and I'm going to be very explicit here. Mm -hmm. Anything in there? No? Looks clear to me. <laughs> I don't know how many people have fired a gun using the trigger scan, but I'm sure it's happened at least once. At least once. You can't be too careful. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's got this motorized load cell, and it's going to actually uh, go over the entire travel of the trigger pull, and it's going to profile and give us a force distance graph. So we've already got our first mm -hmm. two test results here. Yep. And we're going to create a new test, sort of arm the unit, and then run it. You can see the motorized mm -hmm. testing arm there. Okay. And look at that. Look how consistent that is. Wow. 
Okay, so we'll show you guys a picture of the graph here. Uh, we've got three different tests and the lines are basically overlapping over the entire tra travel of the trigger. And what we've got is a peak force of about four and a half pounds, mm -hmm. it looks like. And it's supposed to go up to five, so we're five, yeah. up towards the top. Towards the top. Travel to actuate is about a quarter inch. And a lot of that is the take up on the, the blade. The safety on mechanism the safety. on the trigger. Yep. yep. And about 50 thousandths of over travel, travel to actuate is also about a quarter inch. So about a quarter inch to take up the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the take up. Actually, the take up is about 0.2 and the travel to actuate is 0 0.27. So we've got 25 thousandths of an inch to pull the trigger once you've got the blade back right. and you're kind of ready yep. to roll. And it looks very consistent, and there's not a whole lot of creep um, from looking at the at the graph. Okay, so why don't we take the barrel to action off the stock, mm -hmm. and we're going to crank it all the way down to the minimum setting, mm -hmm. run a couple more tests. Sounds good. Well, that was a little more of a pain than I thought it would be. Oh, man. <laughs> I wouldn't call that intuitive. So what we had to do was take the barrel action out of the stock to adjust the trigger pull weight. And it uh, involves using this special tool. We were wondering what this is. Not a clue. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's just a little plastic fixture that helps you remove the, the mag release so that you can get at the rear action screw. Mm -hmm. Well, once we did that, we backed the trigger adjustment screw all the way out. All the way out. And you can feel there's some you know, sort of Loctite on there or something like that. Yeah, yeah, thread lock. And uh, so we were at almost max pull weight out of the box. Four and a half pounds, it goes up to five. Mm -hmm. And we kind of confirmed that with, uh, with adjusting the screw. I'm gonna check this one more time, okay. And I just ran two scans here at the minimum setting. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go ahead and do another test. Because I like to run it three times mm -hmm. for each. Okay, we're armed. Mm -hmm. And okay, we'll run the third. Okay, and we're at just about an average of three and a half pounds for pull weight. A little heavy for what I like to do. I agreed. Yeah. But uh, the lawyers make them do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the rules. Yep. So maybe down the road we look at lightening that up a little bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's mods that, you know, you can do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, the good thing is the, the scans look good. It's really consistent. You can see the, uh, the take up again of the, of the safety there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, we'll, we'll include all of this data and the graphs in the detailed write-up. So click on that first link in the description. Here's what I'm super curious about, though. Let's take a look at the bore, huh? Absolutely. Okay, let's get that set up. Okay, so what we've got here is the Lyman Bore Cam. This mm -hmm. is the updated version. Came out sometime around SHOT Show last year. And what it's going to enable us to do is to look inside the bore and to see basically what's going on with the surface finish, the lands and the grooves, all of that. And what I'm seeing here is, you're saying these are test fired at the I believe factory? that they fire them from the factory before they send them out. Okay. Yeah, because I see a little bit of the copper there. Do you see that? I do. Yeah. And overall, for a firearm in this price category, I don't see a whole lot of tool marks. Overall, it looks, it looks pretty good, really. And this is the deceiving thing. Mm -hmm. What you see on the bore cam sometimes has nothing to do with how well a rifle will shoot. Absolutely not. It probably will affect how it'll clean. Right. In other words, a really smooth bore is going to clean up a little bit better and that sure. kind of thing. And some ugly bores shoot well, some clean looking bores don't shoot well. So let's take a look at the chamber area. And because we got the muzzle brake we saw uh, on there, we're going to have to just come in through the other mm -hmm. side, which is totally fine. Okay, and so right about there is where we're starting to get into the chamber. And you can see we have some, some visible marks there. Okay. And right there, that's the transition from where the, uh, where the case neck would be mm -hmm. into the lead. And then right there, do you see that little transition right there? I do. That's where the rifling starts. Oh. Yep. Wow. 
So, not bad really. For comparison purposes, you want to pull that aside. Let's yeah. take a look at the compass. Absolutely. Again, the compass is in a, a little bit lower um, price bracket, but it's also kind of a budget rifle. And you can see here, we have overall more tooling marks. See that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'd say the Ruger American, from what we've seen here, it's, it's a win. In yeah. other words, the extra bit of money that you're spending, you know, you're gonna potentially get a bit better quality. Okay, now let's really up the ante. This is, oh. <laughs> we're going top shelf now. Top shelf. This is a section of the barrel blank from Benchmark Barrels. These are hand lapped, match grade, I mean, really super high top end of the stuff. Line. Yep, and if we look in here, we're gonna see what a premium barrel can look like. Look at that. Pretty. Yeah, no tooling marks hand lapped. And so, you know, if we're going to spend, instead of 500 on a rifle, 500 on a barrel blank, we're yeah, going right. to kind of <laughs> up there in, in the quality. Yep. So we're going to want to clean this while we're breaking it in. Mm -hmm. And then we can use the bore cam to monitor what the copper fouling situation looks like. Just like running a wet patch through, letting it sit. Yep. And then running dry patches through, you know, if we're continuing okay. to see that copper fouling coming out, we know we're going to maybe lead need to have it soak a little bit longer or whatever. Okay. So let's uh, put it on a scale and then, uh, then we'll take it out to the range. Sounds good. Okay, so what does Ruger say for the weight on this guy? Ruger's claiming about six and a half pounds, 6.6. .6. Okay, so let's see what it is. All right. <laughs> six pounds, 12.2 ounces. That's just over six and a half pounds. Pretty close. Cool, okay. So, Eric and I are going to put the scope on this rifle. What do you think? Vortex mm. HSLR 416? <laughs> yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I got some Vortex precision rings. Right on. And uh, while you're deciding what scope you're going to finally end up with, that'll yeah. be a good rig. Good good to go. Okay, and then we'll see you guys out at the 100-yard range. Okay, so we got the classic bore sight done, looking down the tube, looking down the scope, click until they agree, and you put five shots down range, and they were all on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, huh? Can't complain with that. <laughs> that is not bad at not all. Not bad at all. And we got some Hornady Match 140 green factory ammunition that we're gonna that we're gonna try and shoot some groups with. Yep. So why don't we do a little trading off? How about Sounds that? Sounds good. Let's do it. It's all you. <laughs> That was interesting. <laughs> yeah. We had a little bit of some ups and downs there. A few. Yeah. I think with anything, it's just trial and error. Yeah. So it started off good, though, because uh, we both took a look down the bore. We did kind of the manual bore sighting method, mm -hmm. you know, looking down the tube, looking down the scope, making sure mm -hmm. they agree. And we had the first, like, four shots all on the same 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Right. It's good. And so that saves a lot of time having to go to 25 or 50 yards and all that. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then craziness ensued. <laughs> so... So we tried, I think, three types of ammo, right? It was the 140 grain Hornady match. Correct. 6.5 Creedmoor. The 120 grain mm -hmm. match, 6.5 Creedmoor. And then we had, actually we had four total. We tried my 143 grain ELDX hunting load that mm -hmm. shoots really good in my Ruger precision rifle. Right. And then we tried the, uh, the Norma 130 grain Scirocco 2. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, this rifle liked some and it didn't like others. <laughs> Uh, exactly. Yeah, it uh, shot really tight on some, and then on the other ones, we were scratching our head. Yep, and we had barrel braking going on mm -hmm. at the same time. Correct. Yep, and so uh, we both had groups that were fortunately decreasing in size, but there was that one load that it really liked. 120 grain. 120 grain. 120 grain Hornady match. So let's take a look at some of the groups real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we had... 0.665 for four shots at 100 yards. And we had 0.597 for four shots at 100 yards. And that, so I was shooting that time and uh, I ran out, ran out of ammo. I was gonna do five shots. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had five shots, 0.817 at, all, all these are at 100 yards. And um, you had some where you had several shots touching. Right. 
and it, there was kind of a tendency to have some flyers for both of us. Yeah, it was like the fourth round would be the flyer yeah. almost every time. Um, I, I don't know what it had to do with uh, the barrel heating up, perhaps. I'm not really sure. Well, I, I think for me there's a couple things going on. First, I'm used to a really heavy rifle with a right re light recoiling round like mm -hmm. 224 Valkyrie, you know, the one that I just built, the Remington right. 700. And the second is I'd liken it to, you know, my favorite handgun to shoot at the range is my Smith & Wesson 629. Mm -hmm. And it's stainless 44 mag. I shoot 44 specials, and I can I can group really really well. But boy, right. when you go to 44 magnum, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I need to do a lot more practicing with that. It's right. just a lot harder. But it's possible to shoot pretty precise mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. So here we've got, you know, uh, I'm used to shooting my TC Compass in 223, mm -hmm. light recoiling, lightweight. Right. That adds up to fine. But when you go to a little bit more heavy recoiling, even with the muzzle brake, I noticed it. I, I just felt like it. Such a light rifle, which is great for hunting. It's it's awesome. Ideal. Um, it just felt like it was a little harder to tame the beast. Agreed. And, and to keep yeah. it under control. Definitely a learning curve. So two things, right? More trigger time. Definitely. Like Definitely. lots like of trigger lots time. Like lots of trigger and time. And that's the good thing about 6.5 Creedmoor is that mm -hmm. you're not going to wear your barrel out nope. anytime soon. Nope. And then let's do some load development. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe 10 shot. And then some OCW, and we'll we'll yep. see kind of where we where we hone in. It'll tell us a lot. Yeah. So you've shot it for a while now. What do you think? I, I really like it. I think it's a great gun. Um, you know, originally I fell in love with the price point and the way it looked, and I thought mm -hmm. how neat. And after shooting it, it's a really nice gun. It, it shoots really well. I think there's a little tinkering to do with just like with anything. Mm -hmm. um, but once we get it dialed in, I think it's going to be a pretty pretty nice setup. Definitely. And your your other two Ruger Americans have proven that they're a, a good durable gun absolutely they shoot really well and yeah. a lot of guys again including bill maher from rifleshooter.com have had really really good success mm -hmm. with them i think this is a particularly strong value you paid 500 bucks for it 500 right on the dot yeah hooked on toys and hooked wenatchee. on toys and wenatchee yep. hooked it up yep <laughs> and i think that represents a really good value because you've got the cerakote mm -hmm. You've got the camo, and it seems like camo usually adds quite a bit to the mm -hmm. price. Oh, yeah, generally. A lot of this stuff is usually a little bit more. Uh, the Cerakoting, for, for one, if you were to buy a stock gun and go get it Cerakoted, you're going to be spending some money. Oh, yeah, definitely. And the Cerakote is just killer looking. This color? Looks great. <laughs> I love it. It's going to hide perfectly in the brush. Yep, especially so. around here where we got a lot of sandy, mm -hmm. desert-type terrain. And it's perfect and for like our that. area. Yep, we got the brake on there. That's mm -hmm. another thing. You know, at, yeah. at 500 bucks, that's... A super That's value. a hundred dollar add-on on any other rifle. Yep, and then you've got the the this takes the AICS mags. Correct. Just I think much preferable over the rotaries. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, once you have that, it's kind of hard to go back to the other stuff. Absolutely. So yeah, you kind of have to pry them <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, you're like oh, <laughs> shove them up in exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So what do you guys think? Do you have a Ruger American Predator? Do you have the Go Wild Edition? Do you want one? Do you have another gun? Do you have a Savage Axis or Thompson Center Venture or Thompson Center Compass mm -hmm. that you really like? Tell us your opinions. If you have this exact rifle, what loads and what ammo has been working good for you? Love to know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and we're on that journey now yep. and are going to be figuring that out. Mm -hmm. So more to come. We're going to work on the rifle. We're going to do some more trigger time. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of the action here on ultimatereloader.com, please subscribe with notifications. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.